Hello, my name is Reddy. Now I am along, along with my colleague, Mr. Venkatra. We both are giving lectures on compiler from many years in Medeji. Now, presently, I want to explain to you clearly how the compiler look like in gate syllabus. So, overall weightage, if you see from the compiler, on an average, 6 to 10 marks we used to get, sometimes 6, sometimes 5 also, sometimes 8 like that. On an average, 6 to 10 marks. So, as you know, compiler, like compiler, uh, if you want to run the program, first you have to compile. Compiler is a, first of all, is a software which internally contain six phases of the compilation. First one is lexical analysis, next one is syntax, next one is semantic, next one is intermediate code generation, next one is code optimization, afterward target code generation. So, in all the six phases, if you see the first one, lexical analyzer, you will take the Intermediate, sorry, you will take high level language as the input, it will give token string as the output. That that output will go to the syntax analyzer, which will create the syntax tree. That will be the input to the semantic analyzer, which will create the modified parse tree, which is also called as the unknownated parse tree. So, afterward, that will go to the intermediate code generation, it will create the intermediate code for the given high level language program. Afterwards, if any possibility there, it will do code optimization. If no possibility, I think same thing will come. Afterwards, target code generation. In lexical ana analysis, what exactly going to be happen? My colleague Venkatra uh, will explain. Thank you, sir. Lexical analysis phase is the first phase of the compiler which is interacting with our high level language. So, first let me say what is the importance of this lexical analysis phase in gate examination. We may get uh, generally 2 marks or 3 marks, a maximum of 3 marks from lexical analysis phase. Uh, the functionality of uh, lexical analysis phase is mainly like this. It reads, uh, lexical analysis phase reads high level language program character by character and it breaks the characters into tokens. These tokens are generally called as meaningful words. In general, in programming languages, tokens are nothing but keywords, identifiers, operators, constraints and special symbols. So, the main functionality of the lexical analyzer is reading characters as input and breaking the characters into tokens. In addition to this, lexical analysis also performs some other functionalities that is eliminating white spaces present in the program which includes blank characters, comment lines, tabs and all these type of things will be eliminated. Hence, breaking the program into tokens and elimination of these white, white spaces and comment lines is the major functionality of the lexical analysis. While making this tokenization process, if any illegal characters are anything available in your high level language, then lexical analysis phase generates lexical errors. Hence, finally, the aim of the lexical analysis is reading high level languages as input, breaking them into tokens, if any illegal things present, producing lexical errors as the output. To design this lexical analysis phase, there are two ways manual way of designing and the tool based designing. For manual way of designing, we will use finite automata or mathematical model, whatever we studied in theory of computation. And in tool based designing, we have a tool called as Lex tool. By using manual way method, finite automata concept we will use, in tool based Lex tool we will use to design this phase. And there is a drawback for this lexical analysis phase. All the errors present in the program, compiler cannot identify at a time. Lexical analysis detects only lexical errors present in the high level language. The syntax and semantic errors cannot be identified at this phase. Hence, tokens are sent to some other phase that is a syntax analysis phase. Uh, there, the syntax errors will be identified. How this syntax analysis phase will work, that information is given by Mr. Reddy, sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Venkat. The next phase of the compilation is going to be syntax analyzer. It will take, it will take token string as the input it will produce parse tree as the output. Syntax analyzer purpose is creating a parse tree. To do that, first of all, two things required, grammar and string. String is the user program. Grammar is the inbuilt one. Turbo C compiler is nothing but grammar only. So, our program is the string and grammar is the Turbo C compiler. So, based on these two things, it will create the parse tree. And one more thing is, syntax analyzer will take the corresponding grammar production and it will create the parse tree. But to select which is the correct grammar at this point of time, first it will ask the lexical analyzer. 
please give token right based on that i will create the parse tree so it will ask the lexical manager lexical manager will give the token based on that he will take the correct production he will start creating the parse tree so syntax analyzer purpose is creating parse tree that is the reason syntax analyzer is also known as parser depending upon how the parse tree is creating we have two types of parsers top down parser and bottom up parser in the top down parser we will take the string also grammar also as input finally we should get the parse tree how top down parser will proceed it will start the in the grammar from start symbol and it will keep on expanding expanding like that finally we will get the string this is called top down parser bottom up parser my friend will explain within few more minutes so in the top down parser there are two ways are there one is with backtracking another one is without backtracking with backtracking that is called as recursive descent parser without backtracking that is called ll1 parser in the in the without with backtracking story right a variable contain more than one possibility it will take randomly one production it will keep on expanding at any where mismatch happen it will take it will try other possibilities that is called backtracking the problem with the backtracking is sometimes lot of time may be wasted because you are doing some unnecessary work in the case of the without without backtracking ll1 parser which is also called as non recursive descent parser which is also called as a predictive parser in in the case of ll1 parser first we will create the ll1 parsing table based on the table we will create the parse tree so in the top down parser best top down parser is ll1 right but comparing the top down and bottom up bottom up is more powerful right bottom up normally contain lr1 top down is ll1 my friend will take care about the bottom up parser thank you sir uh, in gate examination point of view in from compiler subject will definitely will get one question from parsing part that is syntax analysis part as sir said top down parsing and bottom up parsing either uh, either top down parsing or from bottom up parsing one question will be there for two marks that is a uh, in these two parsers sir already told that bottom up parser is a powerful one now i'll explain some introduction regarding bottom up parsing the main difference between this top down parsing and bottom up parsing is way of construction of the parse tree sir told already in top down parsing we'll construct the parse tree starting from the starting symbol and proceed towards a given string but whereas in bottom up parsing we'll take the string first we'll try to generate the starting symbol there we'll use different terminologies reductions and shift actions reduce action different terminologies will be there all these bottom up parsers are called as shift reduce parsers because mainly parsing is happening with the help of following four actions that is known as shift action reduce action accept action error action that's why here the major actions are shift and reduce actions hence bottom up parsers are called as shift reduce parsing in this bottom up parser two type of algorithms exist known as lr parsing and operator persistence parsing the lr parsing is a powerful one compared to operator persistence parsing in lr parsing based on the way of designing of parsing table four parsing methods exist known as lr0 method slr1 method clr1 method and lar1 method in all these methods clr1 is a most powerful one method that's why by default lr parsers this uh, clr parsers are also known as lr1 parsers the way of designing parsing algorithm way of construction of parsing tables from all these things one uh, there's a possibility of getting two mark question it's somewhat a bigger procedure and then the drawback of this lr parser is it cannot handle ambiguous grammars to avoid this drawback to handle this ambiguous grammars operator persistence parsings are used sometime now operator persistence parsing the main advantage is it can handle ambiguous grammars without uh, doing any modification in the grammar itself now uh, operator persistence grammars mainly working based on precedence of the operators which is a higher precedence which is a lower precedence based on this it is working this is about the way of construction of syntax analysis space parsing to design this parser top down method bottom up method any one of this the be best way is powerful one is bottom up approach so bottom up algorithms generally used in practical compilers the there is a drawback for this syntax analysis the drawback is syntax analysis cannot detect semantic errors still there are some errors in the program which cannot be identified our parser program to avoid this we'll design one more phase that is semantic analysis phase to design this we have different techniques those techniques will be explained by my colleague mr reddy sir right so the next chapter of the compiler is going to be syntax directed translation which is the syntax directed translation is nothing but grammar plus semantic actions 
So grammar means everyone our set of rules. Not only that, for those rules, we will add the semantic actions also. That is nothing but SDT. Right. So in the semantic actions, if you observe, there are some attributes. Right. There are some attributes. So two types of attributes we have. That is synthesized attribute and inherited attribute. In the in the case of synthesized attribute. at any variable attribute value will be calculated using children's attribute value that is called synthesized in the case of inherited at any variable attribute value will be calculated using siblings and parent attribute value that is called inherited so depending upon so grammar is sdt is nothing but grammar plus semantic action in the semantic action attributes will be there depending upon what kind of attributes we are using based on that sdts are two types that right. one is going to be s attributed definition another one is going to be l attributed definition in the case of s attributed definition we will use only synthesized attributes in the case of l attributed definition we will use both but in the case of inherited we will take only from left sibling or from parent but not from right sibling that is the reason it is called as l attributed definition in the l attributed definition we are using both synthesized and inherited but in the s attributed we are using only synthesized so that is the reason ls s attributed definition is subset of l attributed every s is l l also but every l is not s now if you see the functions of the syntax directed translation using syntax directed translation we can do we can do evolution of the given arithmetic expression we can do conversion from infix to postfix also infix to prefix also conversion from binary to decimal also storing type information into symbol table creating intermediate code creating syntax tree so many applications are there so the next chapter of the compiler is going to be intermediate code generation my colleague will take care yes to design this phase intermediate code generation phase as sir told that we will use once again syntax directed translation topic that's why here we are in, to design this phase generally sdts will be used here intermediate code generation phase is the translation phase in the compiler so the main major aim of the compiler is will translates generally high level language into low level languages but high level language most of the compilers cannot translates high level language into low level languages if we translate there are some disadvantages the main disadvantage is optimizations cannot be performed that's why intermediate uh, high level language generally translated into some intermediate codes their optimizations will be performed so the following are some of the intermediate codes generally compilers translates uh, tree tree form in this we have two methods syntax tree and directed acyclic graph in linear form we have three address code and postfix code hence our high level language will be translated into either one of this form either uh, syntax trees directed acyclic graph three address code or postfix the drawback of this syntax tree is whenever we are constructing tree structure common sub expressions cannot be eliminated common sub expressions for that tree structure we have to implement repeatedly to avoid this drawback directed acyclic graphs are used directed acyclic graph is nothing but syntax tree where common sub expressions are eliminated the advantage of this dag is common sub expression elimination optimization automatically perform and tree address code in three address code high level language statement is represented at most by using three addresses so most of the cases three address code will be used in modern compilers from this intermediate code part in get examination point of view the way of getting questions is he will give an expression statement if we construct syntax tree how many nodes internal nodes present in that if we construct the dag how many internal nodes present in that if you generate three address code how many temporary variables will be generated how many minimum number of temporary variables generated all these are the type of questions we can expect from this intermediate code generation phase after this the next chapter will be explained by my colleague mr reddy sir right next one is uh, next one is runtime environment so you may think that top subdt is compiler how runtime environment came right it is very simple so runtime environment it may not run the program for running which is necessary it will make the environment ready so if you want to run the program what kind of environment you are expecting so all these things we will discuss in the runtime environment chapter so when program is running the things which are required is it is something like there is a one variable which you are using 
but you are not declared that variable this is called as scope problem so at the time which scope should be taken right that is the, that is the thing what the runtime around will decide it may take them something like static scoping or dynamic scoping so if you use any variable without declaration that is called free variable there are two solutions static scoping dynamic scoping right at the time of compilation time itself it will decide what kind of thing you have to take at the time of running in the case of the static scoping you will take the global variable in the case of the dynamic scoping from which function you came right you will go back and you will check in that there, that variable is exist or not that is the one thing one more thing which is required at the time of running is going to be parameter passing techniques that is call by value call by reference call by copy restore call by name call by need call by text like that almost like six techniques are there but in the syllabus parameter passing techniques not there we will discuss only call by value call by reference next one one more topic what we will discuss in this one is going to be storage allocation strategies that is stack allocation heap allocation and one more thing is static allocation static allocation the problem is going to be recursion is not supported and dynamic data structures are not supported it may take less space because the compile time itself you are allocating memory it will take less space but biggest drawback recursion not supported dynamic data structures are not supported to eliminate this problem we are going to the stack allocation strategy where stack greatest application is a recursion right so recursion is supported using stack storage allocation but dynamic data structures are not supported dynamic data structure means whenever you want you can take memory whenever you don't want you can give memory back those kind of things are not allowed in the stack storage allocation further we are going to the heap storage allocation where recursion is supported and one more thing is dynamic data structures also supported so uh, how will you allocate that dynamically memory so in the case of c language using the malloc function you can create memory whenever you want you don't want memory you can say free in c++ language if you want to create memory you can call new function if you don't want you can say delete in java language for creation new you can use for a deallocation automatically memory will be deallocated using garbage collector these are the things what we will discuss in the runtime environment overall in this subject you will see right 6 to 10 marks 8 to 10 or 6 Six yeah, yeah approximately, approximately six to ten marks you will get year to year so all the things if you want in detail about all these chapters and all in medici classes we used to discuss all the things most probably notes is enough reading reading from the book is very difficult this subject so if you are really interested gate and all so you can attend the medici classes from there you will easily get right this is the overall about uh, compiler subject and all Thank you so much. Thank Wish you, Venkat, sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Wish you good luck. Thank you.